Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Dick van Oeveren and in this video I will show you how to set up dynamic user roles with Aruba switches and mobility controllers. In a previous video I have demonstrated how you can configure static downloadable user roles using ClearPass. The main difference between static and dynamic downloadable user roles is that with static downloadable user roles the roles and policies have to exist on the mobility controllers. With dynamic user roles, you only have to configure the roles in ClearPass and there is no role configuration necessary on the mobility controllers anymore. So let me first just quickly explain how static downloadable user role works. As said, with static downloadable user roles, the roles have to exist and they have to be configured on the mobility controllers. Once a device has been successfully authenticated on the switch by ClearPass, the ClearPass policy manager sends an accept message to the switch with a VSA containing the name of the secondary user role. This secondary user role is the role that has been configured on the mobility controller. Now the disadvantage of this setup is, is that there are two configuration locations. So you have to configure the mobility controllers and you have to configure ClearPass. With dynamic downloadable user roles, you don't have to configure any roles anymore on the mobility controllers. These roles are now configured on ClearPass and they are pushed by ClearPass to the mobility controller once the device has been authenticated. In this animated slide I will explain how it works. The first step is that a device connects to the network and the switch sends uh, an authentication request to ClearPass. When the ClearPass policy manager receives the request it performs the service classification so and then if it finds the appropriate service it will contain a downloadable user role profile and the device uh, authenticates successfully. It then pushes that profile back to the switch. The name of the profile will be the primary user role, which is primary, uh, which is primary in this example. The secondary user role will be a dynamic user role. The behavior between the switch and the mobility controller is slightly different than when using st a static uh, secondary user role. So what happens in the case with dynamic secondary user role is that the switch tells the mobility controller to download the secondary user role from ClearPass. So the switch passes the request to the mobility controller and then the mobility controller will log into ClearPass and download the profile containing all the relevant parameters including VLAN rules and optionally the captive portal information. Once the mobility controller has received the profile it will then apply the profile to the user tunnel. Let me also show you some network traces so you can see what's happening between the switch clear pass and the mobility controller. Uh, in this network trace you see the communication between clear pass and the switch. So let me just go through the sequence here. You'll see the access request uh, coming from the switch uh, going to uh, ClearPass. So uh, 192.168.0.250, that's the switch, and 0.12, that is ClearPass. And then in the subsequent packets, you'll see the, uh, the authentication request. And then once you get a successful authentication, ClearPass will send a access accept message back to the switch and what you'll see is that in that accept message you'll see the two downloadable user roles here. So you see the primary user role and the secondary user role. So that's your 3105 here. And then what happens is that the switch then sends a PAPI packet and PAPI is the Aruba AP control uh, protocol packet. So it sends that PAPI packet to the mobility controller requesting the mobility controller to download the 3105 um, uh, profile from ClearPass. And then the second trace contains the communication between the mobility controllers 
and ClearPass. Uh, so this setup is built around uh, four mobility controllers in a cluster, in a layer two cluster. Um, and what we have is, is that you'll get a, a primary connection like to a primary controller uh, and a secondary connection, which will be the, the, the backup connection. It's a dormant entry to a secondary user controller. So that when the uh, primary connection fails, so when the user anchor controller fails, there is an instant failover to the secondary anchor user anchor controller. Um, so what you'll see in this trace is you'll see the profile being downloaded to the primary and the secondary mobility controller. Uh, now, and because this uh, uh, is a, an SSL connection, obviously the information is encrypted, so you can't really see uh, what has been what is being downloaded, but you can see the, the sequence. So I'll just uh, show you the sequence quickly. Um, so what you see here is you will see the uh, connection being established between one of the mobility controllers. So 159 is one of the mobility controllers to ClearPass. Uh, you will see the certificate key exchange and then you can see some application, da application data being downloaded, which will be the, uh, the user profile, the, the, the user role profile. So that's for 159. So 159 in this situation will be the primary controller for that user. And then in the second part, you will see, well, a very similar uh, sequence, but then to uh, 192.168.0.157, which is the secondary uh, controller. So you see exactly the same sequence. You get the um, you get the, the certificate exchange, and you get the uh, the download of the profile, which is an encrypted format. Now let me show you how this is all configured. The good thing here is is that you don't have to change anything on the switch configuration. It's all done in ClearPass, and there are some minor. Uh, one-time configuration tasks that you have to perform on the mobility controllers. So let's start with the mobility controllers. Um, as you can see, and as I said, I have created a four mobility device cluster. And this cluster, it's a layer two cluster, and that cluster is managed by a mobility master. If you want to know how to set up a full mobility network, please check out some of the great videos that John Schaap created on building this. For the mobility part, there are two main configuration steps that you have to make. So you have to configure the VLANs and you have to configure an authentication service that allows you to log into ClearPass from the mobility controller and so that the mobility controller can download the, the profiles, the, the user roles. So let me first show you the VLAN. I'm in Managed Network um, here and I'll just go to Configuration. Uh, interfaces VLANs. Okay, I will be showing you VLAN 102, which is the VLAN that I will be using for logging in uh, uh, with 802.1x. Uh, it's all pretty straightforward. It's just standard mobility configuration tasks that we're performing here. Uh, so just check out IPv4. I've assigned an IP address. That VLAN is also acting uh, on. Well, it's configured to be. Uh, a DHCP server and the other thing let me just show you the other option here uh, I'm, I'm also performing network address translation so I can use the mobility controller to get onto the um, onto the internet so that's really the uh, the VLAN configuration there's nothing fancy there the other part that you have to configure is the authentication part so what you have to do there is you have to create a server group um, I've created one here, it's called ClearPass, and in that server group you have a server called ClearPass. Um, so that's your ClearPass IP address. And uh, very important, what you have to do here is that you have to configure the CPPM credentials. Uh, so tick the CPPM credentials box and then enter the CPPM username and password. So this can be the same username that you're using on the switches for the downloadable user roles. So th this is a read-only admin. And then the final thing is that you have to enable the uh, the download of user roles. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm going into the say default AAA profile. You can also create your custom profiles here, but you know I'm, I'm just 
do using the default just to uh, to show you what you have to do is that you have to tick this download role from cppm box here so that's the only thing you have to do and then once you've set that uh, you're good to go for the for the mobility controller now let me show you the clearpass configuration from a downloadable user role perspective to the switch, there are no major changes. So instead of uh, sending a static secondary user role, we select the dynamic secondary user role option and then select the clear pass profile. So first, let me create a downloadable user profile for the mobility controllers. And let me just show you how that how that's done. So you go to profiles and clear pass. Uh, and we'll add a downloadable role enforcement. I'm just give it a name. Uh, just call it mobility controller and then 802 to one X. And the product is a mobility controller. And then I'll just go to the role configuration. And what I have to do here is so you can configure all the uh, uh, attributes here. So um, as you have seen, I have configured VLAN 102. So I'm going to use VLAN 102 for that employee. And what I can do is I can add some stuff here. I can add a captive portal profile if I, if I would have one. Um, and I can also configure ACL. So let me just um, add an ACL here. Uh, we'll just call it allow all and add a rule. Uh, I'll just do any any. Uh, but you can configure any ACL rule that you want here and save that one and now what I can do is if I go to session here so ACL type session I can add that allow all to the ACL list okay and then I save that uh, that profile and now what I can do is I can go to the downloadable user role uh, profile and instead of using a static secondary role type I choose the dynamic and uh, you can see the user profile or the profile that I've just created here. So I select that one and I save that profile, that enforcement profile. And that's and that is really that is really it. So let's put it to the test. Uh, so I this is the switch that I'm connected to. I've enabled debugging on the switch and I will be connecting a laptop now and enter the credentials. So I've got my laptop there. Should get a pop-up. Yes, I'm getting a pop-up. Okay, so logging in. As you can see, the, the tunnel is established. So that's good. And just let do let me do a show port access client. Uh, I'm connected to port 2. Detail. So you can see I'm authenticated. So that's good. I can also do a show tunneled node server state. So you can see the state of the uh, of the controller. You see there there's some nice connections there. You can see that um, I have a user connected to 159 here, port two. So that's cool. So that means that that user is connected. Um, the other thing is on the mobility controllers, I can see that there is an active client. What you can see is the active and standby controller. So for this client, the active controller is 159 and the standby controller is 157. So I'm going to check out 159 to see what's happening on there. So whether the right profile has been downloaded. So let me go to 159 here. Um, what I can do is issue the following command is show writes for the downloaded user roles. And then you can see here that there is one downloaded uh, user role and that one is using ACL 89. So you can get some other information here. So the uh, ACLs, ACL list that's being used. Um, and then so, so that ACL number is really important. So what I can do now is I can issue a show ACL uh, table uh, sorry show ACL ACL table um, and then give a number 89 
So you can get some information about the ACL that is being used. So rule count one, ACE count two. So there's one rule being applied and the ACE. So there is actually two ACE entries, which I will show you. So if I do a show ACL ACE table ACL 89. Okay. You can see that there are two ACEs entries. So this one is the entry that I've created in the profile. And then there is also an explicit deny at the end. So that's the that's a rule, an ACL rule that has been added by the mobility controller. And that's really it. So it's it's this is all working. Uh, so this concludes the video uh, that covered dynamic segmentation uh, with dynamic uh, secondary user roles. Um, so be on the lookout for more videos. Uh, so I'm going to do some more stuff on, uh, say, uh, resiliency. And so if you like the video, you can hit the like button. If you have any ideas or suggestions, uh, please let us know. And as always, hope to see you soon on this channel. Bye-bye.